about the street and cops They say I live filthy, I know I ain't guilty They trying to watch me in this white man's world fly out. I can't stop thinking about the street and cops I can't stop thinking about the street and cops The first thing I'm going to do is fuck a white girl the next thing I'm going to do is fuck a white girl kind of slacking on these motherfucking episodes when it comes to this gangster music and dirty politics. Today I'm going to hit you guys with Beatdown Records, which is my label. I brought the label out the first time in 2003. Money is when I actually had came up with the idea of starting up my own label. As far as me ever getting a little idea of rapping, I think the first time I ever got a little feel for it was uh, in 1997 when the homie Don Cisco from Frisco, East South Area had moved into my neighborhood and we bring him different hands that rapped and I was going to his spot and watching him do his thing. That was the first time I ever got like a little taste of the shit, you feel me? And then in 1999 when I was at Scouting, um, Gato had came out, Gato Masloco had came out with a label uh, called Big Thing Records, money, and he was about to hit a compilation. I was gonna jump on that shit, but I got snatched up by the ATF because of uh, some fucking way out weird shit with this Vato who was saying that I was selling guns to different barrios or whatnot, right? So, you motherfuckers got me off the street or whatnot, so I never got to jump on that compilation. And that was in 99 turning into 2000. Um, I didn't even bother to even fuck with the music game again, I mean, it wasn't until 2003 that uh, I decided to say fuck it and give it another shot, give it another shot and see if I could start fucking around with this little rap game. I figured it, it can't be too complicated, you feel me? So. I said, fuck it. I got some beats, I wrote some songs to them. I had wrote that song, uh, Insane, Insane, in 2000, that was originally supposed to be on Gato's album. And I ended up having that, and I kept that motherfucker all the way to 2003. Then I had went ahead and sang that shit on a little karaoke machine type of shit. We recorded that shit on the tape, and uh, showed a couple of the people, they liked it. So I did another one, which was the Wicked West Intentions. And, uh, and people dug that with money. So in, then in 2003, going to 2004, we went to Ensenada to Papa's and Beer, celebrated the new year going to 2004, and decided let's do this album. The bottle that I was gonna bring on was a bottle named Juice, Hugo. He's half Salvadorian, half Colombian. I brought him in money. The dude wasn't a gang member or nothing money, so that's why I brought him in, because he had nothing to do with the neighborhood, but he had a spot in the hood where I was comfortable being at, and it was behind his house. And it was his older brother and cousins, I knew all of them already, you feel me? So, um, and I knew who he was too from the hood since he was a little kid, going back and forth, moving around, I've seen him and all that type of shit, right? But nothing more than that. So I decided to grab this dude money, and slap him on the, slap him with me on the label. Like I said, when I was trying to put this shit together, I had old boy, like I said, he's playing soccer, going to school, working and doing some legitimate shit. So I figured he'd, get, he'd be a, a perfect candidate to start this business with and get them in there as my engineer producer because everybody you need to have an engineer producer you to come in and start your label. Now keep in mind that me nor him had no idea what the fuck we were doing with money. And uh, as far as writing a song, no one showed me, no one taught me, no one told me how to be you know on point cadence. No one ever explained shit to me. You know what I'm saying? That was until way later on down the line. But. 2003 money, like I said, going to 2004, we decided let's fucking do this album money. We had put out Insane, Insane, and Wicked West Intentions on tapes, homies liked them. So I said, fuck it, let's do it. So 2003 going to 2004, it took us 10 days, we finished the album, we completed it. January 21st, the album gets pushed out, 2004 money. And remember, keep in mind, at this time, there ain't no fucking Gucci rappers money. You feel me? There wasn't Gucci, Gucci Man wasn't around, uh, and any other Gucci money. The, the only Gucci that was around before I was rapping money was uh, the Gucci crew. And those are the people who sang that song or sung that girl. You feel me? Oh, money. So Gucci Man didn't come out with his album until 2005, his first album. And, and he was never even recognized until he did that So Icy uh, with, with Young Jeezy. You feel me? 
So before that, like I said, my shit was already out a whole year, year and a half before uh, this dude's album even dropped. And I'm not saying to take anything away from him because the dude's a fucking, he's a boss, right? But I'm saying, what I'm trying to say is the fact that uh, I didn't steal no name from nobody, my name, and I ain't copycat nobody, none of that kind of shit. I'm not saying he did. All I'm saying is that my shit's original shit. My shit's from the streets, money. This uh, Frank Gucci wasn't in no motherfucking rap name, money. That's a motherfucking gang name from the streets, money. You feel me? That I decided to use as a rap name. My boy, when you're moving around the streets, aliases, money, are important, G. You feel me? Man, I had like 10 aliases, money. So I'm, I'm always using all kinds of different aliases, and Frank Gucci uh, just happened to be one. So the album gets dropped, money, getting out the, unfortunately, money, I got snatched up within a year after my album came out. At the same time, money, or actually before, or at the same time that I'm pushing this label out, I pick up some artists. And most of the artists I throw on the label, keep in mind, they're all from the hood. I throw Milo on there. Uh, you got Moreno. You got fucking um, E. You got me. You got uh, fucking up. Uh, and then there was more homeboys down the line. But those were the first motherfuckers that jumped on the label. At the same time, we had J Rod. We had Samson. We had this uh, one guy named Plague. Uh, we had uh, we had Plague. We had, we had Chong. Um, fucking uh, who else was on the label? I mean, uh, Squinkla, which. We knew, her, we knew her as Lala, and later on she was known as Queen Clown when she got with Sight and Giant, and uh, now she goes by Rari. But uh, she was on the label, and then you had Troubles from Troubles Music, but he wasn't from Beatdown Records. He just came to our studio on the strength. I never charged nobody that came to the studio, money. The studio was put there for all of us to use. Anyhow, money, the only album that was pushed out in that era, the first time we pushed out Beatdown Records, was my album, What Goes Around Comes Around. Nothing was pushed out after. You feel me? And um, and I put these guys, I put, try to put everybody on, money. it's just like I said, I had one foot in, one foot out, and I already know the process, and I know, you you know, you have, when you do something, money, you gotta go 100, with just that, and I was on the other side of the fence still a little bit, you feel me? And I still didn't give a fuck about going to jail, but I'm here trying to start these businesses, so I had to make a decision, you feel me? So, regardless, money, we're going, money, and I got all these artists, we're all in the studio, everybody's writing songs, I got all these motherfuckers working, G. Ten of us at least, right? And and I got the homeboy Mac the Cat who had came down from Oakland and I got introduced to us by the homie Panama, who uh who's also an artist, uh, but he, you know, with uh with instruments. And um he brought, brought he brought uh, Mac the Cat down to the studio and that's what we did these dudes and whatnot. And you know, like I said, Big Down Records was Big Down Records was growing money, but at the same time we were passing flyers out to cats. And sometimes, they would, you know, they would toss the flyer or do some weird shit. Like, who the fuck is this? Disrespect, basically. And they would get smashed. So when I push out the album, what goes around comes around, money. Several people are getting caught up in these fucking assault with deadly weapons, assault batteries, attempted murder cases. And my CD keeps on being found in their bedrooms, in their cars. So the detectives are tripping around, who the fuck's this fucking, who's Frank Gucci? They're listening to the album that supposedly is promoting gang violence. You feel me? So they have a trip now. When they get word that it's me, then they start investigating me. And then all of a sudden now, Beat Down Records is a fucking gang. You know what I'm saying? So we're labeled as that. And then like I said, they, they fucking start snatching everybody up, money. You feel me? So all of us start going to jail back to back to back to back. Everybody. And not for no fucking, everybody's going to prison for at least five years or more. You know what I'm saying? Outside, like I said, the members that, uh, there were civilians, you know what I'm saying? None of them got time, but everybody that was from the mob, that was from Beatdown Records, we all went to the pen, money. Everybody, money. Even the members who got into Beatdown Records while I was in prison, they all end up in prison. You know what I'm saying? So they knocked down Beatdown Records all the way 100%, money. Put it like this, money. Beatdown Records were so fucking earning money that I got subpoenaed to the Green Light Murders, money, behind Beatdown Records. You know what I'm saying? Because I think Evo from uh, Hellbound was on fucking Beatdown Records at one point. You know what I mean? So everybody, a lot of people started with Beatdown and started their own little things, you feel me? But but Beatdown Records facility, it was like, it was a lot of dudes from the mob went there uh, to do their music, you know what I mean? And um, all the rappers from the mob, money, a lot of them all got busted, they all got, they're all over now and everything. I'm probably the only one, the last of the last of the dinosaurs still moving around. I'm the only one from the label from 2003 that's still fucking active right now as an artist and the CEO, you know what I'm saying? So, um, like I said, man, we were targeted, many. Uh, there was no fucking uh, crazy times, uh, uh, criminal records, and the cops didn't give a fuck about none of those fucking labels, money. 
they tricked our beat down records money because we was really out there doing it. We, it was getting mixed a little bit, you know? Motherfuckers from the hood were putting in work and then getting caught with my flyers. You know what I mean? We were getting flyers and cats and they were throwing the floor to get fucked up. You know what I'm saying? So we were beating fools down for disrespecting. You know what I mean? So we were on some beat down records was on some real gang shit. That's what we fucked up. You know what I'm saying? We should have known that, but we didn't know. We were younger, homie, and we were mixing this gang shit with this music shit, so it was some real gangster music shit. You feel me? And uh, and that's what we fucked up, nigga. We had one foot in and one foot out. And we used to know the difference. You know what I'm saying? And everybody got locked up. A lot of people got locked up for a long time, money. And like I said, Juice, Juice got 100 years, man. He ain't never came back out. You know what I'm saying? I mean, unless this appeal helps him out and he can make it back out here. But as of now, he got 106 years, man. You know what I'm saying? Well, then I had got like fucking eight to 10 years. I had got fucking 10 years. He had got like six, seven years. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, Milo got like 30 something years. So when I dropped the album, money, uh, I get with the homie, uh, Jay the Butcher. Now, Jay the Butcher, money, if everybody remembers him, rest in peace, that's the homie, uh, fucking, um, he was trying to put me on, homie. He had took me to, I think it's called, uh, uh, Shark City Records over there off of Fair Oaks, uh, behind the Brass Rail over there in Sunnyville, money. Uh, the Machacas and shit, right? And took my album to him to listen to. I didn't even meet them. He took, he took my album to another room and they came back and said they were cool. They didn't want to fuck with me. You know what I mean? But I already knew by the way, homie, that they weren't going to fuck with me. They're from the east side, I'm from the west, I'm from the mob. They don't want to show me love just because I'm from the mob. You feel me? So, uh, I didn't even get, uh, you know, like I said, that, that that was a no-no right there. But but the homie tried and shit, man. You feel me? And and, the, and criminal records and, and crazy times, I already knew Roy from Platinum. I, I, of course, I know Hector Lopez and shit, right? Uh, Mr. 21 and shit. Uh, but these bottles, not Roy, but like Mr. 21, he's from the, he's right there from the art area. He ain't never claimed Alma Avenue, he claimed Virginia. You know what I mean? But uh, I put Alma on the map. This whole beatdown records put Alma Avenue on the fucking map, money. No one give a fuck about Alma Avenue. The hood back then was known by the DMV area. Now it's known as Alma Avenue because I made that shit known. Just like everything else I've done for my neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? And anyhow, money, fucking, um, this dude, Mr. 21, uh, he had a studio money with Tech Pa and, and Taki and all these cats, but they never didn't fuck, they didn't fuck with us though. They didn't show no love. He didn't show no love. You know what I'm saying? They always play games of anything. You know what I mean? We didn't get no love from these cats. And that's why I opened up Beat Down Records, money. That's why I went down the studio right there in the hood for us to go into it. Anybody they wanted to go in there, money. It wasn't for special people or people that thought they were celebrities. None of that weak ass shit, money. You gotta remember, money. And, and when I came out in 2004 with this album, I was really, I was a celebrity in the fucking streets. Everybody knew me from the streets, honey. Everybody knew I was no joke. Everybody knew how to fuck with me. Everybody knew I got to say so. Everybody knew that I can make shit happen. You know what I'm saying? Real fucking fast, honey. If I want you to get down with I'm gonna touch you. You know what I'm saying? That's how I had it back then. You feel me? So, so motherfuckers know, honey. A motherfucker was on some real life shit. So, like I said, I, I, I was a celebrity already on the streets, my boy. A gang celebrity. You feel me? So motherfuckers knew me. So shit was way different back then. You know what I mean? Motherfuckers know who was who, money, and we got treated like that. You go to ice boat parties, money, but motherfuckers would see me and, and and treat me like if I was a motherfucking like I did a, a movie last week or some shit. Oh man, homie. Oh, such a pleasure to meet you. I can't believe I'm here with you. Hey, what the fuck? You know what I mean, I used to trip out. You know what I'm saying? But but it's cause motherfuckers got mad respect for motherfuckers that's doing their thing. You know what I'm saying? And I was doing my thing back then, money. You know what I mean? So uh that was the difference between Beatdown Records and these other fucking labels. When all these dudes wanted to be gangster rappers, but they weren't really gangsters, though. That was the difference. You feel me? And if they were gangsters, they weren't gangster enough to where they were going to jail. You know what I'm saying? You, remember that, man. All these gangsters, yeah, you're a gangster, you go to work, you're a gangster. Man, ain't no fucking gangster if you go to work. My you, you a man that changed his life, that's doing better, taking responsibilities, and doing stuff for his family or for himself and paying bills. You know what I'm saying? That's not a gangster. A gangster goes to jail, money. A gangster's out there putting in work. A gangster's robbing banks. A gangster's fucking snatching fools up. You know what I'm saying? A gangster don't give a fuck about no fucking job. A gangster don't give a fuck about none of that. Then fuck all that. That's a gangster. You know what I mean? Straight up. But who, who, where do this fucking term came from? It came from fucking Bonnie and Clyde. It came from fucking Lucky Luciano. It came from fucking Al Capone. It came from the motherfucking mob, money. Whether it was the fucking Italian, the Irish, the Dutch, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter, money. But that's what that that term, gangster, money, that's where it comes from, G. So you can't take that shit out of context and, and use it for, uh, you know, you're a grown-ass man now and you're taking responsibility for your life. That's not a gangster. You, you, are, you, you probably was a gangster in your past life or a gangster before that and you changed your life. You can't still be a gangster, though, if you're changing your life or you're doing better stuff for you. 
you know, I call myself gangster Gucci, but I'm not a gangster no more, man. You feel me? I do what I have to do if I have to do it. You push me or you fuck with somebody that, you know, I hold in high regards, then you won't get snatched up. As simple as that. You feel me? So that's how I treat my label and my artists, man. I got my artists is back there from my body, man. You feel me? Straight up. You know, Samson and 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 and, and, uh, and Plague and all those guys, Mac the Cat, I always all to my cinema ran to him again, I always show mad love. You feel me? Like I said, man, there's nobody from beat down records on me that I that that's left in bad terms. You know what I'm saying? And I've been cool with everybody. Even Gully, uh Low Dog, uh um and Big Rhino, like I said, there's no bad blood, money. It's just shit that work out. It's as simple as that. That's just the way shit is sometimes. You know what I'm saying? No harm done. You feel me? Basically, they knocked down beatdown records. The only ones that remained but were no longer beatdown records was everybody that wasn't affiliated, which was like J Rod, uh, uh, Play, uh, Samson, uh, Mac the Cat, uh, Troubles, and Squeak Clap. You know what I'm saying? So, them six, they weren't even in the picture, but all the rest of us all got snatched up. The whole label got knocked down. That's the first time around. You know what I mean? And like I said, my, name, I, I, my time in jail, I ain't never been in jail. Every time I've been in jail is for incidents with outsiders from a juvenile. You know what I'm saying? I, I, that's, outside of burglaries and, and, and robberies when I was a kid, uh, I don't have no other crimes other than assault batteries and assault deadly weapons on Southern gang members, basically, right? And, um, and also everybody that was on the label. But anyhow, money, everybody's gone, the label's done, money. There's a couple of things happening, homie. The homie Trigger, he ends up getting on Beatdown Records. Um, fuck, I think it was a bunch of new youngsters where I was locked up to start getting on Beatdown Records and doing music. The homie Juice, he didn't get snatched up until after I got back out, then he got snatched up. So he was kind of trying to hold down Beatdown Records, but not on the level that, that I was doing and not the way I would have wanted it to be done, you know? So. I come back out, money, and I can't push the line on no music. This is now, like I said, I get snatched. I get catch my case 2004, Friday in court. I get sentenced in 2006. I'm in the pen. I get out 2010, October. You know what I mean? I can't. My stipulation on parole is I can't use the gang moniker Frank Gucci, which isn't a gang moniker, money. It's a it's an artist name. You feel me? And then I also couldn't use the label Beatdown Records because it was considered a gang, and I'm on parole. So those were my stipulations, so I couldn't fuck with none of that shit. So I, I came up with Warriors and Riders Entertainment, and I started using the nickname Gangsta Gucci instead of Frank Gucci. You know what I'm saying? Hoping they wouldn't find out, and I waited for a little bit before I started doing this shit. Maybe just a few months, six months. In the six months, money, I hit up the home with Troubles. He sent me to this one studio where I go up in there with this Afrikamo, and, and, and he's selling crack out the studio, money. And I'm fresh off a rice, I've been doing fucking six years practically, money, and you're gonna send me to a crack house. You feel me? So I get pissed after that. I stopped doing it for a little bit again. I mean, I just left it alone for a while. I get off parole basically in 2014 almost, and um, and I decided to just uh, do my thing. Right? It wasn't until 2018, money, that I decided to, to see if I could give another, do another run with this whole rap shit again, money. You feel me? I, I have a lot of songs, so I I, I want to just push out what I got. You feel me? And, and I want to do videos, money, because I was deprived from that by going to jail and getting sent there with with no cause, with for no reason. You feel me? But, but I had the opportunity to do what I was doing, so I had to figure out a plan. So in 2018, I got with Westbound Entertainment, the homie Bo Jackson, the homeboy Timbo, and, and the homeboy Drone Ambassador. We did our first video campaign. The song campaign when he was done by the homie uh, Ku Ed. He made the instrumental, and me, Cisco, and Ku Ed, basically, we produced the song uh, campaign. You know what I'm saying? I recorded it with the homie Don Cisco. Frisco Mac uh, out of Excelsior, you feel me? And then we did uh, No Walking Out, which was all, the engineer for No Walking Out was Chase Clark at this time. It wasn't Kool Ed who did the first track campaign. No Walking Out out of San Jose was the homie Chase Clark from Noise Maker Music, and uh, and that was someone that Don Cisco had plugged me in with, you feel me? And that's what we've, I've, I've been working with this cat for a while now. Don Cisco, like I said, I, mean, I, I was fucking with him off and on, off and on, then, then I didn't see him for a little bit, you feel me? Uh, you know, he'd be doing his thing. So, uh, as I'm doing all this shit, as you know, man, this is 2018, I put out these three things, the jealousy hits, my first start set tripping, and then bam, all the little bullshit happens, and fucks me up, right? 
this 2019, the beginning of 2019. So like I said, I didn't get no opportunity money within eight months of my music dropping. Uh, you know, all, all that bullshit had happened, which I'm not going to talk about because you guys already know what it is. And I got to tell you, if you want to find out, you can go to my interview and find out. But like I said, at the time, I'm like, fuck it, money. So I keep on pushing the line, money. The year they did that shit to me, money, I think I did uh, three videos. Yeah, I did three videos that year, or possibly six. And then the following year, I did another six videos. And then last year, I did three videos. Even though all these things were happening, I was still pushing the line with, as far as I go, from my label, I was the artist and the CEO trying to push my label out. You feel me? At the same time, I'm doing a bunch of different shit, homie. I, you know, I'm trying to figure out how I put my album on BMI, you know, as far as, or, or, a, or ASCAP. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to find out how that go about distribution. You know, do I go through TuneCore, DistroKid, CD Baby? Do I go through uh, GT Digital? Do I go through Empire? Do I go through... So I'm trying to figure out how I go about all this type of shit. You feel me? And you ask people money and they'll fucking mislead you and send you the wrong way because for whatever weird ass reasons, right? So then... So I'm trying to figure all that. So I'm trying to figure that out, money, and which I did. You feel me? I, I ended up my BMI account. I ended up distributing through TuneCore. I should have went through DistroKid, but I went through TuneCore, and um, and that's and that's how I started doing it. But when I asked a certain individual from my label uh, how I get a ASCAP or BMI, he said I had to pay a bunch of money. Then I asked him how I get a distribution thing. Oh, you have to pay a bunch of money. You know what I mean? And it wasn't even all that money. If you do a song and you're on, you go to YouTube, right? or you listen to some music from a new rapper or whatever, go to the description, the little arrow, and you'll see in the bottom, it says Lil Wayne and woo-woo, but the, the song up here is a whole different shit. That just means that they just used another artist's beat, money, so they didn't even pay for the beat, none of that shit. They wasted money doing a video, all that shit. You know, me on the other hand, homie, yeah, I, I, was, I, I buy the instrumental money. I make sure that I get all rights to it, money. Uh, that, and, and that all their rights are relinquished to beat down records and myself so that I get full ownership of not just the publishing but of the instrumental. You know what I mean? So I make mean, that's what all my music. I've been doing that. You know what I mean? So I pay I pay what I have to pay to have that. You know what I mean? And uh and I'm gonna be doing a video soon to bang on you guys with all that shit and let you guys know what's happening as far as the artists, rappers, musicians and whatnot, you know what I'm saying? But that's gonna be something else, money. Anyhow, money. That was my first round of doing this whole beat down records money. But in 2020, I said, you know what? I'm going to do something different. This is a year where I'm just going to say, fuck it, money. So I put, I had 10 stacks right there on the side. And I said, you know, I'm going to invest this into getting some artists on my label. So I go buy a certain amount of videos. I go buy 50 hours at the studio. And I have everything set up for my artists. So my artists don't have to do shit, money. All they got to do is come to the fucking studio, G. And kill it. And put it down. So the first artist I snatched up money out of this whole little shit money is this bottle named Cold. Now Cold on me, the homie Danny boy out of, like I was telling you guys before, out of Bayou San Carlos, the old Bayou San Carlos when Fiesta Lanes, the bowling alley was still there and all that shit back in 92, 93. I know Danny boy, right? And he was working with this bottle named Cold, who was a vice idol. He ain't no gangbanger. That's what I was looking for, right? Not that I don't want to fuck with the homies. I'll put people, I'm, I'm going to put cats on, you feel me? But uh, I bring this bottle Cold in. When I listen to his music on me, I dig it right away. And I ain't gonna lie, the song Leakin had that little, he had like this little King Little G thing to him. You know what I'm saying? With that song alone, you feel me? Not that he could fuck with King Little G, King Little G's on a different level. But this little motherfucker was, he can get their money fast, right? So I pull him. As I pull him on me, he shows me these other fucking songs with this bottle named Gully Boy, who is a, you know, has his own little independent label money. So I pull him, thinking that, you know, he has his own label, he understands the game. So I pull him in, money back. Now I got two cats on beatdown. Now, Cody also knew about the name Love Dog, who he showed me who he was. And Love Dog has his voice money. It's a sick ass voice, G. Alone is irritating. But if you can mix it with the right group of voices, it's badass. You know what I'm saying? So, so I grabbed him. And I needed one more cat, money. I needed one more cat. So, so I grabbed fucking uh, uh, this bottle that's from my neighborhood, from back in the days from the south side, uh, Young Guap, right? But he was Bareface Entertainment, money, which is a bottle. The CEO of that is a bottle named HD 
from Oakland or whatever, right? But but this little youngster, he's my boy though, he's from my wire, so I'm gonna show him love. So I'm gonna put him in the group and he's my people. So I put him down, he beat down as far as the, the group goes. But as a solo artist, he's over there with H D and, and, and doing his thing over there. You feel me? But but I'm trying to bring him on as my artist as far as my group goes. You know what I mean? And it gives him another opportunity to shine, money because he's already shining by himself. I'm gonna let him shine in this group. You know what I'm saying? Then we're gonna see in this group who on, who outshines who. You know what I'm saying? That's why I try to let these guys know it's not about competition, but it is about competition. You know what I'm saying? When I say that, I mean like it's about competition, friendly competition, not jealous competition, not weak ass competition. You know, some man shit, money. You know what I'm saying? Compete and make each other better. You feel me? So now I got all, I got these three dudes, money. Then I ended up bringing this bottle Big Rhino on, right? And he was really a known rapper, homie. I know who he is. He was writing me when I was in prison. I was always cool with this cat. So I wanted to put him on, you feel me? So I brought him on, money. And then uh, and then I had a, a a metal band named Way Too Stone, who I did a song with that you can check out the video. It's called Going In Circles. It's a two-in-one video. You should scope it out if you ain't seen it. So I bring this bottle Big Rhino on, money. And... Um, that's my other, that's my other artist, and then Way Too Stone. That's my fucking group. You feel me? And they're a metal band, like I said. And the Way Too Stone metal band, when they, they grew up in the Alma area, which is my hood, as youngsters, middle school, uh, they were bumping my album. You know what I mean? So I had to put them on. You know what I mean? So, so I, I put them on the label. Money. Plus, I like the fact that they were an all Chicano band, which really, you know, uh, which really vibe with me, money. And, and 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 the energy and everything, I, I like their shit. You feel me? So I wanted to push them out on another level. So what I did was I, I threw them on my song, uh, going in circles, money. The the instrumental, the beat, all that shit was really done. All they did was basically uh, lip sync with the fucking instruments, money, for that song. But I wanted to give them an introduction. You feel me? That I didn't think they had yet. So we did the going in circles, money. The video, me introducing Way Too Stoned as a metal band out of. San Jose West Side uh, under the independent label Beatdown Records. Then I did a video for this Bato Big Rhino. Now this Bato Big Rhino, was, well, we did a video money, but he didn't do a song. And I left this Bato Four Footer, the homie in the wheelchair. I left him in charge as far as managing shit while I was doing other shit. And and there was a lot, of, and that resulted in a lot of little bullshit because he ended up having a fallout with Big Rhino, a fallout with Cole, a fallout with Gully Boy, uh, a fallout with Lil Dog, a fallout with Young Tank. Because I ended up bringing Young Tank in as um, a video photographer and as a graphic designer. You know what I'm saying? So so I put him on too. So I, I'm looking out for everybody. And I'm paying for everything, G. No one's paying a fucking penny in. Don't get me wrong. The homie four-footer here and there, he's buying some weed. He buying a little 12-pack. You know, get a couple of things like that. Help with some gas and, and shit like that. But I'm talking about thousands. There's nobody doing that shit. I'm the only one I'm putting on, but this is my label. So... They, I guess they had the song ready. I took Angel's word for it, which is four footer, and they ended up doing this fucking song, this video. I come and find out while the video is getting done in the middle of the video shoot that this song was ready on the album that belongs to Smokey G. So I tell Angel, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, well, why would you, why would you have me wasting my money on doing a video for somebody else's fucking song that's ready on the album? It, it should have been a song that was Rhino's song featuring Smokey G or just Rhino. Period. You know what I mean? His video. You know what I mean? That's what I'm paying for, not for somebody. So that was the first little fuck up, right? Then uh, we ended up doing Cole's video. I mean, we went to uh, over there, that same little Genie Avenue over there, and we did one of Cole's videos. Uh, I think it was uh, the Cream video. And then we did, um, we went to the hotel and we did his video for Leakin. You know what I'm saying? Then later on, we did another video for him, Rico, which is a Spanish song, because I had him working on an independent Spanish and English song as far as EPs go. Getting them out like that. Lope Dog, I had a chance yet, so so okay so with Lope Dog, but like I said, he, he, he has a voice that uh, is irritating money when it's by itself and you listen to it for too long. But like I said, if you mix it with the right voices, uh, it's, it's, it, it stands out. You feel me? It stands out and, and it, it makes the song. You feel me? So so I grabbed this cat money and I, like I said, I, I didn't have a chance to really invest time in him nor any of the other artists. Gully Boy money, I do a video for Gully Boy. You feel me? Before Lope Dog, before Tank, now Gully Boy. So I do a video for Gully Boy. So now Gully Boy got some video money. Uh, 
He wanted more. He expected way too much, way too fast. These dudes were on my table for four or five months, and they already wanted me to give them 10 videos. They wanted me to buy all kinds of beats. They wanted me to do all kinds of stuff for them where I wasn't going to do that. But we're going we're gonna to try to market. We're going to do a video for you. We're going to push it out, and we're going to see what the numbers are looking like. The numbers don't look good, which they weren't. We're going to put you in, we're going to do a group, all you guys in the same group, so that way you guys have two opportunities. You know what I'm saying? One as an individual solo artist and one as an artist in a group. So it gives you guys, you know, a, a, a double campaign money. You know what I'm saying? So I expect double effort. You know what I'm saying? But that wasn't the case, honey. These dudes uh, didn't work as hard as I wanted them to work, money. I just didn't understand the concept of being a group. You know, when you a group, money, and you guys are, you know, going to go and, and write this song over this beat, you gotta attack that beat like it's the enemy. You gotta attack that beat like like you like you fucking rushing somebody in the hood, money. If I punch the motherfucker in the face, you better kick him in the motherfucking nutsacks. And the next motherfucker better hit him with a brick. And the next motherfucker better smack him with a bottle. The next motherfucker better run him over. I mean, I want to see shit popping. You feel me? And you guys gotta stay on subject. You know, stay on everything, money. Stay on each other. Help each other. You know what I'm saying? The homies fucking slacking. Give him some macking, money. Let him know. Woo woo woo. Pass it. You feel me? And then bam, 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 that's how we make each other better, honey. It's about friendly competition, money. Helping each other out. But you can't have nobody, you know, tripping and feeling uh, that uh, uh, a little constructive criticism is disrespectful. We can't have that, you know what I mean? So I, you know, there was little things, and you got to expect that when uh, these people don't know each other. You feel me? So they come in, money, and like I said, they're in there with Peter Parker from the East Bay, money. Uh, an engineer gets down and shit tight. I highly recommend them. Um, but Peter Parker, money, he's sending me the songs as they're recording them, and I can tell that they're hella off, they're basically not feeding off each other, and all that, the cadence is off, you know, a lot of little shit, money, and it's not all of them, it's like one or two, but I, it's something going on there, it's the energy, you know what I mean? I make a call, I talk to them, they didn't get any fix. Anyhow, they still did some cool ass fucking songs, though, a song named Thotty and Charges, that we did videos for, so now we get the group together. I come from... LA is a San Jose money with um, the vision of how we're going to do these videos. Timbo's already down there. I rent Timbo a room so he don't have to be driving all the way back up to the East Bay for Sao, back and forth. We're going to do three days of videos. So I have him there. I give him a room for two nights, everything money, you know what I'm saying? And uh, and we and, and like I said, when I get there, they're about to load dog ain't showing up. He ain't answering his phone. The second day, he finally answered me. Answer says he's in LA and that some shit had happened with the cops and he had to hide out. So it, the, the shit pissed me off. He, I told myself from the gate, if I do this, I'll leave my money. I ain't gonna play no games with nobody. If they ain't gonna work hard, they get the fuck out of here. And when I hit a dude, like I said, I didn't even bad terms with nobody. I was upset and bothered the fact this guy got caught up in some stupid ass case, homie, right before we were about to attack this shit. So that shit fucking really bothered me. So I let dude know that his assistance was no longer needed and he was no longer a part of Beatdown Records. But the fucked up thing is that we really did all these songs. His voice was really on there. And... I had to stick to uh, what I said I was going to do. If someone was going to go 100, then they had to get the fuck out of here. 100 feet away from my motherfucking ass. You feel me? So that's what I did, money. I, 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 I basically gave him the fucking boot. But like I said, uh, it wasn't no disrespectful shit. And we didn't even bad terms. It was an understandable thing that he couldn't do the song. He couldn't do the videos. He was on the run. And I can't wait. And I'm not going to waste no time. You know what I mean? So he was gone. And then we needed, we needed to get uh, a backup dude, so we had someone play his role on these two videos. Uh, the videos were never released, money, because, like I said, uh, the dude Gully uh, didn't like the fact he didn't want to work on the on the group thing anymore until we can start working with him on his solo album. Uh, but, but like I said, though, he didn't understand what I was doing, and everything's a process. Uh, you can't get on no label and think you're gonna blow up in six months, money, especially an independent label. Especially if you're not putting nothing in there, I'm doing everything. Like I said, it's all my money, money. I'm paying for graphics. Uh, I'm paying for the fucking uh, studio time. Uh, and I'm paying for the videos, money. You know what I'm saying? That's three things. Everything else, money, these dudes had to try to figure out themselves. And if they didn't know, they can ask me. And I can send them on their way and let them know. You know what I mean? I was working on getting a couple of big guys and other things, money. But like I said, within the first four months of me bringing these people on to my label... Uh, expectations for them went really, really, really high because they really were getting free studio time. They really were getting fucking free videos. And then, like I said, they started expecting more shit for free, which 
I couldn't do. You know what I mean? And and it wasn't even that with Cole though. Cole, it was a different story for everybody. Uh, Ryan was that funny because of you know politics, and I didn't want this bottle to be involved or get caught with my shit. So it was a friendly, you know, uh, move on shit. You know what I'm saying? So there was never no disrespect by this dude. This dude, yeah, someone said, oh, he agreed with an opinion of someone. Someone that said he didn't, it wasn't an opinion; it was a fact. He agreed with the fact that he knew that what's a fact. So he wasn't disrespecting me or anybody else. So that dude right there, like I said, big brother, he's a solid ass fato, eh? real life shit. You know what I'm saying? And uh, and I got my love for that cat. And then uh, as far as and, and then I'm just I'm saying this out of, from what I know of, he ain't never disrespected me. You feel me? And then I got um, uh, Gully Boy, like I said, he was expecting too much, and uh, and I couldn't deliver what he wanted, so I think it was better than we just went our separate ways. And I just did that by I just did that by being non-responsive. Man, he basically do try to get a hold of me, and I just stopped talking to everybody when because I just I was getting tired of the shit. All these guys would call me complaining about this guy, this guy's complaining about that guy, this guy's complaining about this guy's complaining about the studios guy. It's a lot of shit, man. You're dealing with a lot of personalities and I got a lot of personalities in my body and all that shit. So I could deal with it, but not when I'm doing long distance because I'm moving around. I'm in Phoenix, I'm in LA, then I'm in San Jose, then I'm back in LA, then I'm back in Phoenix, then I'm back in San I don't got time, all I got is money at that point to invest in you. I will invest my own time in these different artists one by one when the time came, but like I said, first yeah, on the on the label, bam, uh, I got coffee, I got it, and I got it going. Let me get this shit moving. You feel me? Let me get the wheels moving. But you guys doing what you guys are doing? Anyhow, me. I put it down, man. I'm gonna be putting all the fucking videos, all the fucking all the pictures you've been seeing right now, and all those you're gonna see throughout this whole video, money is all the artists, all the little shit that we were doing, money. Uh, way too strong I did a video for them when they called the Bond song. You know what I'm saying? And then we recorded it with Chase at I think the Red Eye Studio, but the dude from Red Eye Studio didn't know how to he didn't know how to set up uh, the drums, he didn't know how to set up the guitar as far as where to put uh the mics at and shit like that, right? To catch the perfect sounds. And then the homie Chase Clark didn't really fuck with metal bands, so he didn't really know how to even record them. So these dudes from Way Too Stone didn't like uh the recording. They like the video, but not the recording. So I didn't, like I said, complaining, 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 which is coming from too many different directions, money. And like I said, when you're not putting a dollar in and you're complaining, um, I don't got time for that shit. So I, I had to cut shit. I had to just start cutting everything off, money. The only person I didn't cut off of all beat down, money, because like I said, um, even Cole left. And Cole, I talked to Cole and I didn't go on his way, but you know, that, what, what we had an understanding. So Cole is still beat down. He just ain't beat down right now. You know what I mean? And then... Um, Gully went his way, man, and I didn't even bad terms, there was no talking shit, no disrespectful shit happened with me and Gully Boy. I, I wish all the love for Gully Boy, he still got his label over there. I like the motherfucker. If I come back with down, he wants to come back, I want to push that cat again. And like I said, remember, keep in mind, Gully Boy's a crip, he's a black dude. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no Chicano, so you gotta like, oh, this guy, like, no. If I got love for all the people, man, yeah, period. You feel me? You're a good motherfucker, I got love for you. I don't give a fuck who you are. You feel me? I just got more, more, I just got more work to do for my own people. I just invest more in my own people because nobody else is. Uh, and, and that's so the, and that's way different than me being around other different kinds of cats and me investing a certain amount of time in other people of another race. But that's not the, that's not the, like I said, I, it's not about race to me, man. It's about talent. The dudes have talent. This guy Gully had talent, man. So I wanted to fuck with him, you feel me? Uh, this bottle of cold was a spice. I don't know money, but, but I wanted to fuck with you. He had talent money. The dude looked up was in Montano. He had talent money. The only Montano on the label money was this bottle of big rhino. Uh, the whole way to Stone Band for the money, uh, they were just Mexican Chicanos money. That was it. You feel me? So that's what the label was about money. And I, like I said, I was pushing all these cats out money. And it, um, and, it, and, it, and it cost money. It cost a lot. You feel me? To do everything I did, I spent over ten thousand dollars just on this, on on the back, on the whole uh, artists from Beatdown Records money. You feel me? But I learned the lesson, money. I learned how the game goes. You feel me? And not everything about the game. You know what I mean, because one thing, if I do this again, I am not going to let somebody else manage something that don't know what they're doing. I had let Forefooter manage the groups, I the the group and, and all the members. I had him basically doing everything. And like I said, everybody was complaining about him. Uh, he had something to say about them. And it was always a little back and forth type of thing to where uh, it was kind of productive. And then like I said, I didn't want to deal with it. So I cut everybody off. The only part of the fuck I kept on the fucking label with me is, is four footer. You feel me? And 
four footer money, uh, he was just there. You know what I mean? He was just there and he didn't know what he, his position was. And obviously, he can't be management no more. You know what I'm saying? So I tell the motherfucker, I said, look at homie, grab a fucking drone and learn how to fly that motherfucker. Just go buy one. Buy a drone. I'll get drone ambassador to come down, bullshit with you, and show you how to use that shit. Tip you up, show you how to do that shit, show you how to fuck around with the Final Cut Pro while you're over there. He can come down, he can chill because he's always in the Bay Area. He, he needs someone to post up at. You know what I mean? So he was going to my old house and posting up over there with Four Footer and teaching him how to do all this shit, money. Now Four Footer been flying drone, money. You feel me? So, like, I, I tell people, I'm saying this, it's because everybody I fuck with, money, I don't ever say Back in the days, I said, you know, we go on a mission and go do some nasty shit, but we can't do life. But as a grown ass man, money, anybody around me, homie, all I do. It's try to game you up. It make you a better person. You know what I'm saying? And I'm a blunt person, homie. So I, I'll catch your flaws fast and I'll point them out to you. I don't have to be mad at me, though. So then you know, I, especially people who complain about life and complain to me about everything, I have to point out certain shit to them. You know what I mean? But I point it out in a constructive criticism type of way. And, and, and then I also uh, uh, give them some insight on, on what I think the problem is and what I think they should do about it and how they got to handle it. Or stay the fuck away from me. Because I don't need all the bullshit. You know, like I said, I, I get away from certain things because I have a lot of people uh, fucking with my energy, man. And I get all these fucking fools away from me because it's negative. You know what I mean? And uh, even Angel, I sometimes, you know, his energy gets a little bit fucked up and I have to get on him and let him know, like, you, you gotta stay positive, man. You can't fuck the bullshit, fuck the negative shit, fuck the dumb shit. You know, uh, this Vato, four foot man, he's got a long way. I, I posted this video. That he did, or Cinco de Mayo, I mean, that's him all right there flying around with the drone and shit, man. You know what I mean? So, uh, so give it up for that Bato right there, homie. Uh, he's pushing to the next level, man. It's a young motherfucking four footer, homie, the, the, the Chicano drone motherfucking man, homie. And I got him uh, teaching two or three other Bato's, all Chicanos, how to fly a motherfucking drone, man. The more and more and more of us, the, the more hands they can make money on the side, and this and this and that, and whatever, homie. But I'm about building. You feel me on about building? So that's what we're doing, money. That's, that's what Beatdown Records is about, me. Like I said, uh, that's my label right there, money. These are the things that I did uh, to try to bring this label out, money. But like I said, I had to cut off a bunch of artists. And anybody who's doing independent shit, they know how it is already, too. This is just, it's just a part of the game. It's how it goes. I got a new artist I'm bringing out named Noito. You know what I'm saying? He's a little baby, money. 14 years old, little young, so he's not a gangbanger. He saw a little kid, money. Uh, it's my homeboy from my hood, son. So I'm about to push him out, money. And and like everything costs money, G. You know what I'm saying? But we gotta invest. And when we talk about investing in your community, uh, that has to do sometimes with the people in that community. And that's what I'm doing. I'm investing in my community. I'm investing in these youngsters. I'm investing in the next generation. You know what I'm saying? And, and I'm using my motherfucking money to do it. You feel me? Ain't no one giving me a uh, handout so I can go use that money. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm using my own money. Like I said, uh, that whole fucking thing I did in 2020 was a waste of my money in a lot of ways. I took down all their fucking, um, all their videos, money. You feel me? I took down all their videos. Uh, there was just like a lot of shit that I did that, that, uh, that, uh, was kind of productive to beat down records, money. 2020 was a failure year, money. 2021 was bullshit. You feel me? Now we're in 2022, but in 2021, I was able to build two, money. You feel me? In 2021, I, 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 I learned how to engineer. I learned better. I learned how to use uh, the DaVinci Studio 17. I learned how to use the Final Cut Pro. I learned how to use the Blackmagic 6K. I learned how to use the uh, Sony, the Alpha 7S III. Uh, you know, I've been, like I said, I, I try to teach myself because if I'm going to be doing this, I, I want to be able to teach the artists. You know what I mean? I want to be able to teach the groups. I want to be able to show them what they're doing so that they little by little can start thinking about doing their own independent label, their own independent thing, and still have all the resources and me right there uh, to holler at, you feel me? Uh, uh, a mentor or whatnot, you feel me? But that's what, that's what, that's what, that's what my label's about, bro. You feel me? Like I said, I'm gonna bring up this Vato Noito. I'm about to bring out Rari again. And, um, and I got, I got a couple of new artists I'm gonna be pushing out soon, money. So, so stay tuned for the whole Beatdown Records thing, money. I just wanted to give you guys uh, some insight on Beatdown Records, money. Now, I know it ain't the craziest story ever, homie, but I just wanted you to know what Beatdown Records stands at, money, and where we at today. You know what I mean? Like I said, I'm the only um, continuing continuing artist on Beatdown Records since it started in 2003. All the other artists, there's no artists on Beatdown Records no more. 
uh, from 2003 to 2021. You know what I'm saying? Except for Lil Moito that I just put on the label. And then, like I said, uh, uh, Lala that I slapped back on the label too. And I'm about to start pushing her out hella crazy. So I hope with that segment that gives you guys a little bit of insight on the whole Beatdown Records money and what I've been doing, my boy. And like I said, this is going to be my third time, my third round, money, where I'm going to start pushing artists out again. And I think I got the, I think I got the idea now. I think I know what I'm doing. And, and like I said, it's DIY, money. You got to do it yourself. You can't let somebody else manage and start fucking with your label and all that type of shit. Not saying that Angel didn't know uh, that he was fucking shit up. He just didn't know what he was doing. And I just put him put him in a position and made him responsible for something he had no knowledge of. You know what I mean? So you can't hold nobody accountable for some shit like that, right? But check out my next video coming out soon, money. Like I said, I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a rundown of the whole beatdown records, money. I'm out. I can't stop thinking about stricken cops. I can't stop thinking about stricken cops. They say I live filthy. I know I ain't guilty. They're trying to watch me in this white man's world. Blow. I can't stop thinking about stricken cops. I can't stop thinking about stricken cops.